Peter, as we stand here on the floor of this House debating an extraordinarily important moment of time about the direction we're going to go, uh, this issue of paying our bills, we need to understand that what we're really talking about here is not tomorrow's bills. We're talking about expenditures that have been made over the years, Excellent point. dating back to World War II and even before World War II, expenditures that have been made, votes by majority of this House and by the Senate, signed by the President, America decided to spend the money. I, earlier, I put up a chart here talking about where it came from. Uh, this House and George W. Bush voted to reduce taxes, created a deficit, had to borrow money, voted to start and to, and to uh, uh, carry out two wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, borrowed money to do it. These are past expenditures, and here we are 12 days away from the default crisis where our Republican friends are using this moment in time where we're not really discussing tomorrow's expenditures. We're talking about yesterday's expenditures, and they're saying, give us our way or else America defaults. Representative Garamendi, I think that uh, the message from the Democrats in the House of Representatives is straightforward and very logical. Don't end Medicare. We saw three votes to end Medicare in the House. We say save Medicare, make it stronger. But then we talk about cutting, cutting programs that don't create jobs. Do those cuts where there's not jobs created. Where there are, save those programs, strengthen them. Provide for jobs by investing in education, in innovation, and in infrastructure. And it's very easy when you take the education investment, the infrastructure investment, and certainly the education investment, that equals jobs for Americans, for middle class Americans. And that's what it's all about. If we create jobs, it drives down the unemployment factor, drives down the deficit. And there's no stronger form of medicine, bar none, than jobs being created. It solves a revenue crisis. It solves a deficit crisis. It solves a spending crisis. Well, Some of these programs are correlated directly with unemployment. There's a need to address the needs of the unemployed, the poor. If you put people to work, if you invest in training, retraining programs, education, if you invest in R&D to grow, move ideas along into a manufacturing mode, and then you make it in America, these are the values that we embrace as a party in the House. And it's been a refreshing message, one that really gets to something here. And at the same time, we're speaking to the default crisis. We're saying this is how we resolve that default crisis. Don't walk away from the obligation, the responsibility to pay our bills. And as you said, two wars, a pharmaceutical deal for Part D for Medicare and millionaire and billionaire tax cuts were all spent. Those were all forms of spending. And all of that, all of that was borrowed in order to spend on tax cuts. And now the bills have come home to be paid. Happened a decade ago, it doesn't matter. There are bills that have to be paid. We cannot put the economic vitality and viability of this nation at risk or, solve or, or, or trigger an international economic crisis by not paying our bills. So we address a default crisis, we save Medicare and strengthen Medicare, and we have a formula of innovation, education, and infrastructure that equals jobs for, for Americans, working families for middle-class Americans. It's straightforward. It's straightforward. It's, it's, uh, we can